From WYTV Channel 33, this is a 24-hour news source update. I'm Stacia Erdis. About 400 Youngstown area teenagers met in a summit this afternoon at the Chauvin Career Center to talk tough about crime. City officials were there to answer their questions. The teens were then given the opportunity to come up with their own solutions. And coming up next, stay tuned for Money Matters Live Line. Andrea Wood will host a panel of money experts here to take your calls. In first weather, snow overnight, a low near 15 degrees. Southern Park Pontiac in Boardman announces rock bottom prices on brand new 1993 Pontiac Sunbirds featuring automatic transmission, air and more for just $99.95 or select Pontiac's popular 1993 Grand Am now only $10,995. See Southern Park Pontiac now for amazingly low rock bottom prices on brand new 1993 Pontiacs only at Southern Park Pontiac, Market Street and Route 224 in Boardman. Regular programming will not be seen at this time in order to bring you the following special presentation here on WYTV Channel 33. Money Matters Live Life is presented by WYTV Channel 33 in cooperation with the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. Tonight's Money Matters Liveline is brought to you by Centel Cellular. Experience the freedom. Good evening and welcome to Money Matters Live Line. I'm Andrea Wood, publisher of the Business Journal, and I know, as you know, that money matters a lot. It matters to young people saving for a car or a college education. It matters to young adults starting out in their careers, hoping to be able to buy a house or launch their own business. Money matters to baby boomers as they hit their 40s and their 50s and they worry about how to pay for their children's educations or if it's too late to put enough money away for their retirement. And of course, money matters for those over age 65 as they worry about the uncertainty of Social Security and the possibility of having to pay catastrophic health care costs. Money matters to all of us, and tonight, WYTV presents Money Matters Live Line in hopes you'll find the answers to the questions that matter the most to you. Behind me is a panel of 15 experts you can call and talk to about your money matters. The phone number is 783-3300. You'll see the telephone number on the screen during tonight's program. Each one of our panelists belongs to the Northern Ohio Institute of Certified Financial Planners, the regional chapter of a national organization which this year celebrates its 20th anniversary. Here's a message from the national president. Good evening. I'm Richard Wagner, national president of the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. Today, more than ever before, money skills have become survival skills, and we need these skills to function, especially in the face of temptation, instant gratification, or simply life's necessities. In a complex economy, only you can take responsibility for your personal finances. Believe me, we know this isn't easy or pleasant, but it is necessary. Whether you're stumped by taxes or struggling to save, you probably need help to improve your personal financial situation. A certified financial planner licensee is especially trained to advise you on your personal financial planning concerns. With expertise in areas ranging from retirement planning to investment management, a CFP backs up training and knowledge with a continuing commitment to ethics, experience, education, and examination. The Institute is pleased to contribute its resources and talents to this special program on financial planning. I hope you will use it to bring your personal financial picture into focus. And please call our Money Matters Live Line 783-3300. No question is too silly for our panel of experts tonight. We want to hear what matters you have about money. With us now are David Lesjack. He's chairman of the Northern Ohio Institute of Certified Financial Planners and Mark Jeffries. He's the president of this organization. And let's begin. We're telling the folks to call these lines in the back with the experts. What is a certified financial planner? Well, a certified financial planner and a certified financial planner designation uh, basically identifies uh, an elite group of financial planners that have met uh, all the specific goals, uh, education goals, and the ethic goals of the uh, international board and standards and practices of the certified financial planners. Mm -hmm. um, when you see the Mark CFP behind a financial planner's name, you can be assured 
that he or she has, has gone through rigorous training uh, and has uh, passed uh, rigorous tests and has also signed a uh, code, of, code of ethics. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I take it that's all involved in the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. Can you explain a little bit about that, Mark? What is the Institute? Yes, uh, the Institute of Certified Financial Planners is our professional association. It was founded in 1982 and we have 7,400 members. Dave and I, as you said, are with the Northern Ohio Society of the Institute, and we advocate the CFP as the advisor of choice in financial planning. Mm -hmm. What kind of training does a CFP undergo? Well, you, you basically have uh, requirements to, to meet. Uh, number one, you, you normally come from a, uh, a different service, either being a stockbroker, uh, an insurance agent, uh, and then you kind of want to go on to something more. Uh, so we get you, the, the training that a CFP has is we have to pass all the required examinations at the, at the College for Financial Planning in Denver. Uh, we've got to have at least three years of experience. And then you have to meet continuing education requirements each year uh, also. And those are some of the regulations? Yes, correct. Can you talk about some of those? Yeah, but I'd like to mention first and foremost, a, uh, a certified financial planner can really help anybody. Mm -hmm. The average American, uh, the low income to middle income to higher income. Uh, as far as regulation, we're regulated by the International Board of Standards and Practices for the CFP, and they're the ones that license individuals to become a CFP. Uh, they develop the examinations for the certified financial planner. Uh, they set the guidelines for our uh, continuing education requirements, and they also um, uh, they develop the, uh, uh, the compliance for our professional code of ethics. Well, that's all well and good, and it sounds like our phones are really ringing in the back. I hear all kinds of talk in the back. It sounds like we've got a lot of questions tonight on Money Matters, and that's really important to us. The number here is 783-3300, panel of experts, certified financial planners, whatever matters to you about money, this is the time to get some free advice here, courtesy of Channel 33. When we come back, we're going to look at some important first steps in financial planning, and that is budgeting. I think my dad works harder than any other dad in the world. But he still shows up at all my games. He says it's because he's such a great guy. But I think it's because he put a phone in his truck. I think I play better when he's here. What's the first sign of spring? When the ice melts? No. When the snow melts? No. When the cheddar melts? Spring into McDonald's today and get two cheddar melt sandwiches for just three bucks. It starts with a quarter pound of beef, tangy cheese sauce, and grilled onions all on a hearty rye bun. Great deal, huh? Especially if you're going to spring for it. Oh, boy. Two cheddar melt sandwiches for three bucks, but only for a limited time. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Hi, I'm Andrea Wood. With the uncertainty of today's economy, people want to know what businesses are expanding, what companies are moving into the region, where the economic growth is happening, and where to find the lowest mortgage and car loan rates. That's why I joined 33 Eyewitness News to bring you Business Matters every Tuesday at 6. So if you want to know what's happening in the Valley's economy or the business world, join me and the 33 Eyewitness News team every Tuesday at 6 for Business Matters. New is hot. New is cool. So what's new? The hot new 93 Ford Ranger. That's cool. Yeah. Buy one now, you get a free bed liner. A free bed liner? That's not all. This baby is redesigned with a great new look. Comes with standard rear anti-lock brakes, AM FM stereo. Wow. You can save 2000 if you buy this new Ranger now. Save 2000 and a free bed liner? Yep. The number one truck from your number one Ford dealer. So the 93 Ranger is what's new. And it's only at your Penn, Ohio Ford dealer. I knew that. Weather School is Channel 33's educational project. The participants are thousands of students in the Mahoning and Chenango Valleys. Channel 33 and I are committed to encouraging science education. That's why a Weather School question and answer is featured daily during First Weather on Eyewitness News at 6. Classrooms now on our mailing list will be receiving free updates in the years to come. Weather School, only on Channel 33. Weather School brought to you by Giant Eagle. WYTV and Giant Eagle, making learning fun. 
Tonight we're going to look at four areas of money matters, budgeting, taxes, investments, and retirements. And if you'd like to have your call answered on the air, you need to call 783-3315. Now the first step in financial planning is budgeting and there are rules of thumb almost everyone needs to learn. For 18 years, Dr. Ron Volpe has taught students at YSU the meaning of a dollar. A finance professor, he explains the importance of budgeting cash and credit. Last time we met, we took a survey on how many of you are keeping budgets. Volpe says keeping a budget is easy if you're disciplined. You've set some goals, at least you can start saving certain amounts each pay period that will lead towards those goals, no matter how small the amount you save. While budgets range from simple to complex, Volpe offers some guidelines. You shouldn't spend more than 15 to 20 percent of your net income on credit cards. Uh, on your housing, they generally say you shouldn't spend more than 20 to 25 percent. As for credit cards, Volpe cautions folks to use them sparingly. 30-year-old Tom Law, a student, agrees. Eight years ago, I got involved in banking and I was involved in collections. Um, and I really became aware of the debt problems that a lot of people get themselves into. To prove that, Volpe showed the class a chart which estimates one million people will have filed for personal bankruptcy in 1992. For Money Matters, Naomi Rich, 33 Eyewitness News. Now we're going to talk about budgeting and credit. And if you have a question about budgeting and credit and you'd like to talk to Ron Volpe on the air, call 783-3315. And we do have Ron Volpe right now in the studio here to answer some question and questions about budget. And what's the difference between a long and short range budget goal? Uh, long term is usually over 10 years. Short term would be one to 10 years. Uh, for example, if you were saving for a vacation, that might be a two-year goal. If you were saving for a down payment on a home, that may be a five-year goal. If you're saving for an adequate retirement, that may be a 20-year goal. Um, do you find that students have some very general questions about budgeting? Do, you, do, you under, do they understand what's happening? Well, it's interesting that we took a survey in my class before uh, the camera crew came up to uh, do their uh, introduction and we found that 70 percent of that group kept a budget and that really surprised me. That surprises uh, me too. Yes, and uh, most of them said they tried to stick with it and uh, a lot of them were on their own living away mm -hmm. from home and uh, had to stretch mm -hmm. uh, scarce dollars uh, a long way. Okay. Well, I understand we have a caller on the line. Let's find out what our caller has to ask tonight in Money Matters Live Line. You're on the air, caller. Do you have a question? Yes, I would like to ask the question. Okay, we're all ears. It's concerning uh, a young relative of mine who is going to the university now. Recently, he was willed $15,000. He invested it because he's planning on going, becoming a doctor. And he figured he might need it long, uh, uh, you know, long later. Term. Mm -hmm. uh, What's your question? However, now it's showing up on the, uh, with his social security in and it's knocking some of his financial aid is there anything that we can do in that line outside of uh okay is there anything they can do i'm not aware of anything that he can do offhand i don't know if he's talked to the university student aid department uh maybe they have some advice for him that uh, would assist him. But at some point he has to show that as, as income, income or as an asset Absolutely. and so therefore he might not qualify might not for a qualify. scholarship. Is there a rule of thumb for savings, Ron? I would say we should be saving about 10 percent of our uh, net income. That's much higher than we are saving as a nation. We're only saving about 5 percent as a nation. And we're low is, in the world, which aren't is, we? Which is very low compared to most of the industrialized world. 
Aren't those savings rates going up, though, a little bit? I think They're I read going up a little bit higher. The, this year's savings rate is projected at about 5.2%, which is up a little bit from last year. That's some years. progress. Yeah. Tell us about credit. What are the three C's of credit, as you say? The three C's of credit are character, collateral, and capacity. And uh, the character, these are the factors that determine your credit worthiness to a lender. Character refers to will you repay the loan? And it's based on your past financial payment record, how you've paid your bills in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, capacity answers the question, uh, can you repay the loan? It's based on your income, your expenses, and your uh, outstanding debt. Collateral refers to uh, what happens if I can't repay the loan? Mm -hmm. What assets are available to secure the loan? Uh, most of these factors are evaluated in the credit application that one fills out. Mm -hmm. What happens when folks get over their heads in credit? I mean, we hear about this all the time. Credit card companies just mail out credit cards and folks are tempted to use them. Well. I think it takes a certain discipline not to use them. Um, they represent an easy and convenient form of overspending. And if somebody gets in over their head and is in serious problems, they should mm -hmm. contact their creditor and let them know that they're in trouble and see if they can work out some sort of adjusted payment plan. There's also credit counseling services. There, There is a chapter of the Consumer Credit Counseling Services here in Youngstown, which is, I believe, part of a national organization. So if you were to look it up mm -hmm. in the phone book, there there would be such a, an organization. Okay, we have a caller on the line right now with a question for Ron Volpe on crediting or credit and uh, budgeting. What's your question, caller? Yes, um, I uh, went through a divorce and I have a bad credit rating because of the divorce and I'm trying to buy a home now with the GI Bill, mm -hmm. uh, how would I go about hmm. How would you go about that with a bad credit rating? It's going to be difficult. Uh, most bad credit ratings stay with you for seven years and um, I'm not familiar with the particulars of the GI Bill and what provisions there are but uh, you may be subject to this bad credit rating for seven yeah. years. It's tough. It's tough. Okay, well, we're almost out of time on this segment, but I want you all to get your questions ready on taxes. That segment's coming up next, and if you want to ask a question on our live line, that's 783-3315. When we come back, tax tips. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. My dad works harder than any other dad in the world. But he still shows up at all my games. He says it's because he's such a great guy. But I think it's because he put a phone in his truck. I think I play better when he's here. There's an old saying that time is money. With today's busy lifestyles, most of us need more of both. That's why a First Federal Warren Home Equity Loan is a smart way to handle your loan needs. The rate on a First Equity Loan is often lower than other consumer loans, and the interest you pay is usually tax deductible. Applying is easy, and once approved, using your money is as simple as writing a check. When you need cash, the solution may be closer than you think. First Federal Warren is here to help you. Are you prepared for your important financial decisions ahead? The power of good financial planning starts with you. Seek help from a member of the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. Our members have completed examination, experience, ethics, and continuing education requirements to use the Certified Financial Planner CFP designation. Call toll-free 1-800-282-PLAN to request members in your area and a brochure on how to select a qualified financial planner. 
This week, who's got the hottest late night party? Two words for you, Arsenio Hall. Monday, catch Primetime's queen of comedy, Roseanne Arnold, plus Robert Blake and singer Patti Smythe. Yes. Later this week, it's Prince and the New Power Generation, Sinbad, Sandra Bernhardt, Kenny Rogers, and Dame Edna, plus the music of Public Enemy and Ruth Brown with Bonnie Ray. Hot. Very hot. Hot. Hey, you know it. All this week on Arsenio. Monday night at 11.30 on Channel 33. TV Talk is about to reach new heights. Excellence in broadcasting. With a master of American entertainment. If you think he's modest. A man, a legend, a way of life. Or ever boring. I have more fun than human beings should be allowed to have. Then you don't know Rush Limbaugh. But you should. Rush Limbaugh, helping America to lighten up. Weeknights following Nightline on Channel 33. Welcome back to Money Matters Live Line. It's really exciting here in the studio. The phones are lit up. There's so much chatter we can barely hear ourselves talk. If you want to pay less than income taxes next year, you have to start planning this year. And chances are you're going to need help. With April 15th just around the corner, Don Samuels, a certified financial planner in Boardman, is assisting clients with income tax preparations as well as investments. The best tax shelter today is taking the money right from the beginning and putting it away without having taxation taken out. To do that, Samuels mentions some of the most common questions he's asked and asks. Uh, if you have a pension plan, are you participating? Do you have an IRA? Can you participate? Can you deduct it? If you're a school teacher or if you work for the hospitals, are you participating in the 403B? Which are the ta These are the tax deferred programs. Samuels has given tax advice to one client, Dr. Anand Garg, for 12 years, initially for Garg's business. <laughs> No way a non-professional can do it. And it also very time consuming. And especially with the corporation that we have, two doctor corporation, uh, you definitely need a professional help. Samuel suggests if you are in a high tax bracket to invest in municipal bonds for tax-free interest. Those with lower income should consider taxable vehicle bonds. For Money Matters, Naomi Rich, 33 Eyewitness News. We're here now with Don Samuels, a certified financial planner. And as I said, the phones are so busy, we already have a caller on the line with a question on tax tips. Caller, are you on the line? Let's hear your question. Hi. Um, hi, our savings are a uh, past two and a half years. We're saving our uh, $2,000 yearly, and we're old now. I want to know what I should expect from my half of taxes. Uh, can you repeat that? I think we got well, we cut had off. a tough time hearing that question. I think you said you had two thousand dollars a year going into an IRA, and what could you expect from uh, savings and taxes? Was that the question? Yes, I want to. I want to know what I'm ex what I should expect in taxes. We're putting two thousand dollars away in an IRA. Okay, when you put two thousand dollars away in an IRA, what tax? Do you know what tax bracket you're in? She's off the line now. If you're in the fifteen percent tax bracket, you're going to save fifteen percent of the monies you put into an IRA. If you're in the 28% bracket, you're going to save 28% of what you put into the IRA. As far as uh, when you take money out, uh, before, I, before I forget, all the monies and all the earnings you put in the IRA are tax deferred until you take them out. But then when you take them out of the IRA, they're all taxable. Even if you're over 55 and a half? Yes. If you're under 59 and a half. 59 and a half. And you take them out, you'll get your regular tax plus an excise tax of 10%. But if you're over that age limit? If you're over 59 and a half, you'll just pay the regular tax bracket you're in at that time. And who knows what bracket we're going to be in at that time. So the point is you defer, well, you, you don't you, pay any taxes. You don't, you don't pay any taxes. You keep deferring until the time you need it, which is retirement time, which is right. after 59 and a half. So theoretically, whatever bracket you're in, you save that percentage. On Correct. every dollar on, on you the put into the IRA. Correct. Okay, we have another caller on the line for you, Don. Caller, can you tell us your question on tax tips? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, my uncle recently was admitted to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, I was wondering, all his legal papers are coming to me. How much money does he have to make in order for me to have to file his income tax? Is there a certain amount? Yeah, yes, there is. Uh, I'm assuming he's over 65? Yes. Okay, basically... Uh, I don't have the exact figure. I think it's something like uh, you have the standard deduction, which is uh, $4,300 plus his uh, item. Sixty. It's about $7,500, give or take. Um, the reason I don't have the exact figure, our computers do them all the time. But for an elderly person, they've got to make uh, 
in excess of $8,000 before they have to file. That brings us to the question, what's best, to take the itemized deduction or the standard deduction? You really have to calculate. You have to determine um, which is the better way to go. Uh, when you take the itemized, you're entitled to medical, which most people don't get because of the, the phase app, what they call right. it. But you can still take your home mortgages, uh, your, home, your equity lines mm -hmm. on the mortgages. You can still take state income tax. Uh, you can take points on a refinancing of a home if you pay for it separately, pay for the points separately. Contributions. And of course, you can take the miscellaneous deductions, but that's subject to the 2% of your adjusted gross income. So they're really phased down quite a bit. So the answer is you have to calculate which is you a better to way to go. You have to calculate which one's better. Okay, evidently we have another caller on the line. Popular subject with April 15th coming up. Caller, what's your question for Don Samuels? Uh, yes, my name's like the woman's before. Um, my mother was elderly last year, and we turned over her money into my account, and we were just allowed a gift tax this year, but she passed away. So where does this leave me? Do I do an inheritance tax or an income tax for myself? That's you have to file a final return on your mother, a final tax return for her. Uh, if there is a, an estate, I don't, I'm assuming that there's not a $600,000 estate, um, you have to file a last tax return for the decedent, which is your mother. The monies that you receive from your mother, the inheritance, is not taxable to you. Why isn't it taxable? Inheritances are not taxable to the recipient. Uh, if there are estate taxes to be paid, it's paid before the estate is settled, before the monies are transferred to the inheritors. Boy, so the callers just keep calling and calling and calling. Another caller on the line for a tax tip question. Caller, what's your question? Uh, my que question is, uh, today I received in the mail um, an advertisement for Charles Givens, and in it, mm -hmm. it is on cutting your taxes mm -hmm. 50 percent. 50 percent? 50 percent. I do you have an opinion? <laughs> to, um, now, he wants $40 sent to him to receive this package that gives you this information. Can you tell me, do you think it's, if it's worth it? Boy, that's a touchy question. Yeah, do, you is, wanna, do you want to answer that yeah, one or that do you want to do that one very diplomatically? Yeah, that is touchy. Uh, he is a very fine organization. The Gibbons organization is a very good organization. And what he's selling you, he's selling you uh, literature and brochures and books that will help you uh, determine your own taxes. You're going to be your own tax consultant. That's what you're. That's what he's selling you. Uh, if you think it's worth forty dollars, then it's a good investment. That's about the size yeah. of it. Another caller on the line. Okay, caller, a question for Don Samuels on taxes. Yes, um, my husband and I are in our late forties. Uh, we are on nothing. We have no bills whatsoever. Our income is about uh, 42000 a year. What would be our best way to get some kind of deductions? Maybe buying a house? Well, you definitely could buy a house mm -hmm. and you would save all the mortgage interest. And the mortgage interest today are very low, so that would be a, a good That'd suggestion. Good uh, could you do that out of state? Buy a house like uh, we may want to retire in Arizona. Would that be feasible to be able to deduct all of our... Uh, like air flights out there and stuff like that whenever we go out to Wait a minute. You're talk, you're talk, and stuff. You're talking about buying a retirement home, is that it? Well, eventually, I'd like it to pay itself off now for five or ten second years. second home. Yeah, you can still deduct the interest on a second home. Uh, flying out, and yeah, that's a touchy question. People say they deduct all their flights and so forth. If you're going out there to maintain and check on your investment property, you can deduct the cost of getting to and fro to your investment property. But once you get out there, then your living costs, that's personal expenses, and that's not deductible. Right. Don, it seems as though we always hear about tax shelters for the rich. That's, yeah. that's a big right. controversy. What about tax shelters for middle income yeah. or, or even working class? Yeah. The, the, best, the best things that people should do is if they're qualified to contribute to an IRA, they should do it. Most people, uh, after the 86 Tax Act, uh, sort of discounted IRAs like they weren't worth it, but they mm -hmm. still are. And if you're, um, if you're married and, and making less than $50,000 in adjusted gross income, you can still contribute and get some deductions for an IRA. The other one, uh, they still have the low income housing credit programs for the middle income. Actually, it's for every, every income. You get credits for 15 years of about 15% a year. And the government is encouraging to build senior citizens housing mm -hmm. and so forth, and that is how they give the credits. Mm, that sounds real good for Youngstown. We have another question. Caller, can you tell us your question on taxes? Yes, I'd like to know how much a high school student, before they have to file. How much can a high school student make before they have to file? Same anybody has Same, to. Same, right. $600? Yeah, if you make more than, yes, make one $600, but you... Did you, did you work? Well, I was going to ask He's him. not on the air. If you worked and you had taxes withheld, you should file to get your taxes back because I'm assuming you don't have to pay any income taxes. Um, 
at, on a high school student, I think it's the $2,300 and then the um, standard deduction. It's, I think it's about $3,400. And to be honest with you, my computers do all the calculations so for this. It's, but, so it's $600 yeah. at that point that right. the employer has to withhold. Right. Okay. The biggest thing on, on the high school kids is the fact that they work and their employers withhold uh, federal and state income tax. And they're not subject to paying that, so they should file just to get their refund back. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, we have another question on taxes. Caller, can you tell us your question? Uh, I had an old car that I sold for more than I had in it. It's like a, a hobby of mine. I sold it and someone told me that I didn't have to pay capital gains on it unless, unless I was a car dealer or something. Do I have to pay uh, tax on the profit that I made on this car? Yes, you, you have to pay tax on any profits you make, any income you make, period. Even though you're not a car dealer. So if you have uh, a car you sold for greater than your cost, then the difference is taxable income. How many, what percentage of people do you think cheat on their taxes? Do you think most people are cheating? <laughs> you think I'm going to answer that? <laughs> I'd, I'd like to know that. I'd like to know. Are most people honest? Or I most think people most cheat? people are honest. I think most people are very honest um, and they try their best to uh, uh, adhere to the tax laws. They really do. Yeah, I do. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I hope that's true mm -hmm. because I know I'm honest. <laughs> I think you're probably honest. Well, we try. We have to be. I think most of our viewers are honest. We have and, uh, to be. Yeah. I think this has been a really popular segment, yeah. and the phone lines are, are still lit up and, and behind us. The CFP Certified Financial Planners are taking any question you have on Money Matters, 783-3300. This has been a segment on tax tips, and when we come back, we're going to talk about investments. My dad works harder than any other dad in the world. But he still shows up at all my games. He says it's because he's such a great guy. But I think it's because he put a phone in his truck. I think I play better when he's here. To fill your expectations I'm Andrea Wood. With the uncertainty of today's economy, people want to know what businesses are expanding, what companies are moving into the region, where the economic growth is happening, and where to find the lowest mortgage and car loan rates. That's why I joined 33 Eyewitness News to bring you Business Matters every Tuesday at 6. So if you want to know what's happening in the Valley's economy or the business world, join me and the 33 Eyewitness News team every Tuesday at 6 for Business Matters. It's no secret, crime is on the rise around the nation and here in the valley, from carjackings to money scams to assaults. Someone puts a gun to your head and tells you to get out of your car. What would you do if that happened to you? Someone pulls a knife on you and it's you he wants. What would you do if that happened to you? Beginning Tuesday, we'll bring you vital information on how to protect yourself from being a victim of crime. If this happens to you on Channel 33 Eyewitness News at 6 and 11. Me? I need someone to love. Oh, baby, how you like? You're so cute. You've always been cute. I guess that's why you've been crazy about me since the day we met. I was not. Weekdays at 4.30. Welcome back to Money Matters Live Line. The phones are still ringing off the hook. We hope you keep trying and we hope you get through. Now we turn to investments, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. The choices are as varied as our individual needs. Jim Mariotti of Boardman has been a client of financial planning for 12 years. Through guidance from Roger Fobble, a certified financial planner, Mariotti says he's pleased with investments he's made over the years. I'm trying to pay the rent trying to make the car payments and trying to keep a little money aside for my 
uh, daughter's college education. Uh, what's left over is a remnant, and we try to make that remnant into, uh, into a more useful uh, portfolio. In order to do that, Fobble asks clients to think about what they are looking for and explains more conservative investments like mutual bonds or high-risk investments like the stock market. <laughs> we start asking questions. Like, you know, what, you know, what is your goal? How much money do you have? Do you have $500 or $500,000? Is it for retirement? Is it for college? Is it for uh, just general living expenses? You know, what is the goal of the investment? That's, that's the first thing we try and determine. Fobble also examines a client's current money situation, asking about any debts on items like credit cards or car payments. We recommend people pay those off first before they even invest. Uh, not necessarily mortgage interest because mortgage interest is, is tax deductible, but uh, consumer debt is not. Fobble insists it's never too late to begin investing. For Money Matters, Naomi Rich, 33 Eyewitness News. And Roger Fobble is with us. Roger Fobble is with us live now in the studio. And let's get started right away with the stock market. Up one day, down the next, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. What's it all mean? Is this the time to buy stocks? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you should never not buy stocks. With a volatile market, that's exactly what you need to make money. Without volatility, you're not going to make money in any investment. So now explain that. Well, if, if something's going to stay the same or stay level, you're not making any money. When the market moves up and down, that gives you the advantages to buy low and sell high. So that's what you need is volatility in a stock market to make money. Okay. We have a caller on the line with a question about investments. Caller, what's your question? My wife and I are both retired. We mm -hmm. have enough income that we're over the $32,000 limit and therefore we have to pay tax on the Social Security. Yes. Uh, our income mostly comes from IRAs, which is in CDs. Would it be a good idea when they mature to put the IRAs into tax-free bonds, which would then reduce our income? We would no longer then have to pay tax on the Social Security portion. Okay, th there are some definite advantages to, to what you're subscribing to, but my approach to investing is to make as much money as possible. I don't mind paying taxes. That means I'm making a lot of money. So rather than to avoid taxes, I would just as soon invest in something that's higher yielding than the CDs, pay the tax, and net more money after all is said and done. Bottom line is how much money is going to be left in your pocket. Now, obviously, it depends on your, on your tax bracket. But if you're in the 15% tax bracket, I certainly wouldn't advise uh, municipal bonds at this 28% or 31% or the new 36%. Yeah, I would, I would definitely look at municipal bonds as a good investment and under any condition. Okay. All right. We have another caller on the line. Can we have your question, please, for Roger Fobble? Yeah, I'm going to take um, a uh, retirement, and I'm going to get about $150,000. That's pretty good. And a lump sum, and then uh, I want to know which is the best way to uh, invest it uh, to keep my, uh, an income. Well, the first thing you want to do is roll that over into an IRA so you don't have a taxable event. So that will, that will eliminate any taxes from that lump sum roll, uh, distribution. At that point, you want to put together a portfolio of income and growth investments because the, depending on your age, uh, you've got to take into consideration that you're going to be around for 20 or 30 years or whatever the scenario is going to be. You can't put it all into an income investment. You have to put some in growth. So depending on your income needs, what, what your uh, other sources of income might be, that would, that would dictate how you, that money should be split up between growth and income, whether it's stocks or bonds. Sounds like that guy needs to talk to a financial planner. We have another caller on the line, and your question is? Uh, my question is, uh, what is going to happen with dollar bank stock? Uh, dollar bank stock? I was going to ask that question myself, but I thought it might be too controversial. Awfully glad you did. Well, basically what's going to happen <laughs> is PNC is going to buy the bank. And it's, no, no, PNC, <laughs> PNC announced today around 3 o'clock well, that go. they're not going to buy the bank. <laughs> well, if they're not going to buy the bank and then the stock is just going to continue trading on its own whatever market it has. The, uh, the actual uh, story on that is Ohio Bank Corp announced that that they were in the preliminary stages of talking to other potential suitors for the bank. They gave no reason why PNC and the Ohio Bank Corps, by mutual agreement, decided to break it off. The stock, I believe, went down to 19 today and then leveled back off at 21. Right, but I, I think in general, bank stocks 
as, as a sector of the market are going to be extremely good for the next six months, possibly a year. Uh, banks are being profitable. They're profitable right now. I would definitely hold on to the stock because there will be another suitor. There's no doubt about it. Uh, most banks will have suitors. All the independents eventually, over the, by the end of this decade, the independent banks will be gone anyway. Gee, that's a dire forecast. Let's take another call. What is your question, caller? Uh, yes, uh, I'm single and I'm 32 years old. I'm earning about 40, between 42, 45,000 a year. And I would really like to save about 10% of my income and towards retirement. Mm -hmm. What would be the best way to go about this and uh, actually uh, saving some taxes at the same time? Okay, depending on, on where you work, if, if you're employed, uh, you would look, see if they have a 401k plan and try and uh, get into that to maximize that advantage. And, th and that's simply a salary reduction plan that allows you to put money away from your payroll into a, a pension plan. Uh, secondly, if you don't have a pension plan, then uh, put it into an IRA. And if you can't do that, then you just have to invest normally. If you're in their 40s, you should be 100% in growth right now. And just pick a good uh, global growth fund is what I recommend personally. That's another good question. Tell us, what about mutual funds? What is a mutual fund and, and what's that all about? Okay, mutual funds are the way, that's the way most people should invest because it's professionally managed money. It, it's being managed by professionals whose sole responsibility is to make those portfolios grow. There are now more than 4,000 mutual funds out there and it, it's why you need usually some help to, to figure out which ones are best suited for you and which are going to do the job for you whether they're income funds or growth funds or balanced funds or global funds or sector funds. Uh, there's a lot of things to pick from, so it, it is important to get a professional to help you decide which fund to pick. We have another call, and what's your question, caller? Hello, um, I want to know if you can... Now, for some reason, we lost that call. Can you try repeating that? Okay, well, that was a foul ball. Well, you're going to get that one. That sounds in, familiar. Every once in a while, you're going to get one. What? Tell us, what is an annuity? Okay, an annuity uh, today, there's two types of annuities. There's fixed annuities and there's variable annuities. Uh, we obviously recommend the variable an annuities because you can do mutual fund investing inside of an annuity environment, which simply, simply allows you to have gains, capital gains. Uh, you can switch from mutual fund investments without any taxable event. You defer your taxes. Uh, until you annuitize the contract. It's just a, another vehicle to use. It does have limitations. It's similar to an IRA. You have to be 59 and a half to, uh, to, uh, to exercise any payments out of it. But uh, it's, it's a good way for people to save uh, and have the insurance behind it of whatever money you put in is guaranteed. So it's, it's okay. a safe way to invest. We have another caller, and your question is for Roger Fobble. Uh, I have approximately $4,000 I would like to invest. And what would be the quickest way to roll that over? Hmm. The, the quickest, quickest way, way to, to roll it over. Quickest Double way. that money. It's simply just, uh, you just want to, when you say roll it over. I could leave it lay idle for five years. Oh, okay. Well, simply you want to get into a good growth, uh, in fact, an aggressive growth fund. An, ag what, an aggressive growth fund? Well, something like the, an Oppenheimer Discovery Fund or uh, a fund that's called the small cap funds. These are funds that invest in the smaller companies but have much more potential for growth and are more volatile. And because you have a five-year time frame, uh, historically, five-year time frames will always give you a profit when you're in the stock market. Okay. And another caller for Roger Fobble. Your question, please? Yes, I'm 42 years old and I have two children. I want to put some money invest for their college education. They're 13 and 15 years old. Yeah, between 15 and $20,000 to invest. How does he, how does he right. invest that? Okay, they're, they're, based on their agency, again, they have a five or more year time frame. So we would look for a good global growth fund at this particular point in time to put the, the entire amount into. And then monitor it very closely every quarter and go from there. You're always flexible with, with either a mutual fund or stocks to get in and get out. So it, it's the kind of thing that you want to use mutual funds for the safety and the diversity. What about the Ohio tuition credit program where you can buy these credits ahead? Right, you can do that, but I think the rate of return on that is not as great as if you get into a good growth fund and have it work for you. You'll have a lot more money available and not restricted to Ohio universities or any, any uh, state schools that you may have to apply that to. Mm -hmm. So I'd li I like the flexibility of not being in those. Okay, one last caller on the line. Your question quickly. Yes, I heard you discuss earlier about mutual funds and 401ks. I'm currently enrolled in a tax-deferred annuity, right. and I've got some uh, 
shares in Janus Fund, mm -hmm. 20th Century Ultra. Right. And I just switched from Scudder International over to their intermediate term uh, municipal bond fund. I just wondered your opinion about how I'm doing so far. Well, the, the last one is all wrong. You don't need to be in a municipal bond fund inside a 401k. Your money's deferred anyway. So you went and you should get back into the international fund, which has not performed but will. So you, you're, you're kind of making the wrong moves. And you certainly don't want to be in a tax-free uh, vehicle inside a 401k. There's no real advantage to that. Gee, Roger, thanks a lot. The phones are just ringing off the hook. I wish we had a, a program that lasted all night long. We'll be back and we'll talk about retirement. My dad works harder than any other dad in the world. But he still shows up at all my games. He says it's because he's such a great guy. But I think it's because he put a phone in his truck. I think I play better when he's here. It's no secret, crime is on the rise around the nation and here in the valley, from carjackings to money scams to assaults. Someone puts a gun to your head and tells you to get out of your car. What would you do if that happened to you? Someone pulls a knife on you and it's you he wants. What would you do if that happened to you? Beginning Tuesday, we'll bring you vital information on how to protect yourself from being a victim of crime. If this happens to you on Channel 33 Eyewitness News at 6 and 11. Are you prepared for your important financial decisions ahead? The power of good financial planning starts with you. Seek help from a member of the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. Our members have completed examination, experience, ethics, and continuing education requirements to use the Certified Financial Planner CFP designation. Call toll-free 1-800-282-PLAN to request members in your area and a brochure on how to select a qualified financial planner. I never park my car without the club. I use my car every day. I depend on it. That's why I use the club. All you do is slip it on the steering wheel, extend it, lock it up and go. It only takes a couple of seconds. I'm Captain Jack Cleric. If you own a club, use it. If you don't, buy one. The club is an easy to use, tough to defeat anti-theft device that's recommended by Operation Lockup as an effective, affordable deterrent to rising automobile thefts. Never park your car without the club. Accept no imitations. Make sure the anti-theft device you buy says the club on the handle. I never park my car without the club. I mean, why ask for trouble? The club is available at better stores everywhere. Welcome back to Money Matters Live Line. We're going to be on the air for about another 15 minutes, and the folks will be around to take your calls for a few minutes after that. Any question on anything that deals with money, 783-3300. We're now going to talk about retirement, and it's estimated that only 3% of the people who reach retirement age are financially secure, which means it's never too early to begin re planning for your retirement. For 10 years, Bruce Hyman of Liberty has saved for retirement with the advice of certified financial planner Stephen Chagrin. Now at 32, with a young daughter, Hyman is glad he was convinced to save early. And Stephen uh, implied to me how important it was to take a little bit of that money out and put it away, even if it did downgrade your present lifestyle, to prepare yourself for retirement, because in our generation we can't count on the government to take care of us when we're 65 years old. Chagrin agrees, telling clients to depend on 15 to 20 percent of Social Security for retirement needs. The rate at which it's going to offset your earnings, particularly as you uh, earn more in, in your lifetime, is going to be lower and lower. Chagrin practices what he calls sophisticated fortune telling, using computers to model a client's long-term plans and income, balancing them with assets and expenses. If you're young enough, of course, we try to save more. Uh, if you're not able to work any longer, then we have to take a look at fine-tuning your expenses 
so that we better meet your objectives. Shagrin also uses charts to explain how to save and suggests, for example, reinvesting 10 percent of any checks received with interest and dividends for more financial security later on. For Money Matters, Naomi Rich, 33 Eyewitness News. Steve Shagrin is here with us now in the studio and it's estimated, according to a new study by Merrill Lynch, that baby boomers between the ages of 35 and 45 have to save 19 percent of their after-tax income for retirement in order to have any kind of comfortable retirement. Do you, do you agree with that figure, Steve? I would agree with that figure, Andrea. It's uh, generally estimated that someone will need to retire on 60 to 70 percent of their pre-retirement income. And when you start saving early, you can do it either pre-tax or after-tax. And it works out to about 10% of your pre-tax or almost 20% of your after-tax income. But really, isn't it true that the baby boomers are way behind, that uh, folks like me uh, perhaps haven't done what we should have done? Well, we grew up in the age of commercialism, and we always want to get <laughs> more things. And, and uh, once people reach about 45, they've realized they've pretty much bought all the toys they want to buy. And uh, education is looming. They might have to have uh, elderly parents to care for and of course their own retirement. So people are really getting serious between 35 and 45 and starting to sock it away. Which is good for your business. We have oh, a caller on question. the line. I wonder, are you a baby boomer caller? No, not quite. You're not quite. I'm over that age. Oh, you're over that age. What's your question about retirement? Yes, on, uh, on an IRA, if you uh, have a self-directed IRA and you have utility stocks in it, is there a way to reinvest the dividends Hmm. Uh, that the uh, utilities pay, and also which funds now would be good funds for monthly income, you know, during a retirement. If you wanted to invest anywhere from fifty to a hundred thousand into uh, mutual funds now, which ones would be the best for, uh, you know, for income? Hmm. Well, that's more a question for Roger with the investments, but I can tell you on the uh, utilities stocks in a uh, self-directed account, they can be reinvested if the account offers. Uh, that function within street name. Uh, when stock is being held at a broker, usually you can't reinvest it, and that happens in most self-directed accounts. But there are a few out there that will actually allow the reinvestment. Uh, on the other question, I really would have to defer. Uh, mm -hmm. I really don't do a tremendous amount with utility funds. Okay, what happens if you're starting too late, like we talked about the baby boomers that are starting too late? What do you do if, you, if you're starting too late and you have limited resources to begin with? Well, you really have to sit down, like the first part of the program talked about, and mm -hmm. budget. Budget very, very carefully because we all spend our money differently. And whether you've saved $100,000 for retirement or a or million dollars, depending on exactly what your expenses are and what your lifestyle requirements are, you can make that last a lifetime plus. And the idea is that you would run out of breath when you run out of money, and nobody can plan that predictably. But you want to mostly match your expenses over the long term. And there's a lot to plan for. You've got uh, inflation to consider, uh, whether you're going to get cost of living adjustments on your income, and how long to plan for. Uh, people sometimes say, I just want to plan for my life expectancy. But a lot of us outlive life expectancy, sure and we've got to plan a lot longer. We have a caller on the line. Do you have a question for Steve Shagrin about retirement? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I had a, qu a question concerning I want to make monthly deposits into a whole life insurance contract, um, and there is something involved with the contract that um, is a, dis a disability option mm -hmm. where they'll actually pay the premium if I become disabled to continue my savings. And I was wondering exactly, being a younger person under 30, uh, if this is a pretty good way to go because the tax advantages seem to be there. Well, the disability provision is one thing that's very important to consider because when you're younger, uh, particularly 35 to 45, the chances of becoming disabled sometime before you're 65 are almost two to three times as great as the chance of dying. Uh, so if you have the ability to stand the extra premium, which comes with that disability rider, it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. Steve, what about Social Security? Everybody's worried. Will there be Social Security when we reach retirement age? What's going to happen with Social Security under President Clinton? What's the latest? Well, the word is that the Social Security system is funded presently till well after the turn of the century. Uh, whether we're going to get the same dollar amount that we had anticipated, whether it's going to start at a later date, nobody can tell because it's all subject to changes by Congress. 
Uh, but people should remember that Social Security was implemented only to provide a part of your retirement income. And if you're earning sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year by the time you retire, Social Security is only going to replace maybe twenty to thirty percent of that. Mm -hmm. Your employer provided pension, maybe another twenty or thirty percent. So you've got to look to yourself and provide the savings so that you'll have money to retire on later on. Uh, the rule is pay yourself first. If you can do it pre-tax with an employer plan uh, using an IRA, that's great. If not, after-tax savings is just as good. We have another caller on the line. Do you have a question for Steve Chagrin? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, we thought we were going to plan something beautiful for our retirement. We bought and purchased much land about seven miles from downtown Youngstown. Mm -hmm. And it's near a golf course really near uh, one and a half golf courses. Another one's coming, popping up. Anyway, because of health problems lately and no major medical uh, for me, I used to help my husband in his business and there was no work pattern under uh, Social Security for me. Everything went on my husband. Mm -hmm. So I can't even get on disability. Anyway, our money, our working capital has disappeared, but we do have clear title to the land, and our beautiful dream of making an adult community uh, close to the Youngstown area, close to the university and all yes. that. Um, we did start a corporation thinking that maybe we can sell stock to get some working capital. Is this a good idea, or do you have any suggestions? Well, the hmm. problem with real estate is that it's sold on, on three bases, and that is location, location, and location. You seem to be sold on the location of the property, but it's a matter of whether or not you can turn it into something that's going to be useful to you. Uh, you may be uh, property rich, but cash poor, and the only way to uh, change that is to either look at bringing in investors that would want to take part of the real estate from you in exchange for cash so that you can invest it and provide the cash flow you need. Uh, or somehow get out from under it because you, the idea in cash in retirement planning is to closely match the cash flows you need from the assets you have and you don't want to hang on to unproductive assets if you don't have to. Sounds like she has a tough road to go. We have another caller on the line. Can we have your question please? Yes, I would like to have an understanding of the relation that the United States government savings bonds have as uh, vehicles of investment in relation to other vehicles. Okay. Well, savings bonds have a very good utility in that they can be purchased with payroll deduction and the money would come right off the top. They don't have a tax deferral. However, you don't necessarily pay income on the accrual each year because you buy it at, say, half price and it matures at the full amount. And you would have taxes to pay when they mature. Uh, they're a very good vehicle in saving for retirement because at that time, if you've let them build up, you can convert your E-bonds to H-bonds and start taking an income from them every six months. Uh, how they compare to other investments depends exactly on what your time frame is, uh, what, your, what your mindset is with regard to other types of investments and things that may have a little bit more risk to them. We have time for one more caller. Can you give us your question quickly? Yes, I'm 35 years of age and I've been putting my IRA investment in bank CDs and your rates. I was wondering if that's a bad investment. It's not necessarily a bad investment, but it has to be looked at in relation to the long term. With an IRA, you have till 59 and a half until you can start taking the money out without a penalty. Uh, so what you want to do is invest it for the long term, and historically stocks have been the best investment over the long term. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you, Steve, for answering the questions, and I want to thank all of our callers and everybody here at Channel 33. The phones are still lit up here, and if you want to continue to call and ask our panel of experts some questions, you're welcome to call 783-3300. Money Matters Live line was produced in conjunction with the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. I think we covered just about everything, didn't we? We sure did. But well, we're going to have another show near the end of the year. And coming up in March, Stacia Erdis is going to be here to talk about family matters. And I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions about that. So thanks to everybody on our panel of experts, the Institute of Certified Financial Planners, everybody here at WYTV and the folks at the Business Journal. And be sure and watch Eyewitness News tonight at 11. Good night. That's great, Andrea.
Money Matters Lifeline is presented by WITV Channel 33 in cooperation with the Institute of Certified Financial Planners. Tonight's Money Matters Lifeline was brought to you by Centel Cellular. Experience the freedom.